has everything. Bumping in, banging. <laughs> Big Boy's Big Neighborhood. Boy. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, we got Russell Simmons up in here, man. And there's so many things to talk to Russell Simmons about. But the first we got to talk about is the happy vegan. And Russell, welcome back, my brother. But why write this book? Well, it's because I see my, a lot of my friends laid up in casket, caskets. I just went to DJ AJ's funeral and mm -hmm. Joey Robinson died the same week, both from ass cancer. I mean, colon cancer. They both just checked out. And I see all the uh, diabetes in our community, you know, multiple of what it would be in the rest of the world, all the heart disease in our community, 20 uh, years over or older, uh, African-American women have some form of heart disease uh, developing, 50% of them, if they're 20 or over. Um, the heart disease, the cancer, the diabetes, the, the sickness that ensues and the cost of that is, is astronomical. Mm -hmm. And the, the comic disaster, you know, 100 billion animals made to be born through factory practice into the most horrific lives, stuffed with poison, and then fed to the community only to destroy the planet. The cow's number one cause of global warming by far. Mm. Almost twice the trains, planes, and automobiles. So when you think about, you know, the, the animal uh, industry and how much harm it's causing, especially the factory farming industry in America, you think you got to warn the people. FDA is not doing it. Right. They tell you milk does a body good. Milk right. is a straight poison. Milk is not good. There's very little good you can come from milk, but a lot of bad. 85% of Jews are lactose intolerant, 80% of blacks. And if you came over to Nina, the Pinta, the Santa, I don't give a fuck. You are likely <laughs> to be lactose intolerant, and you're not gaining the calcium they claim you're gaining. It's a lot of misinformation. So I want to put some of it out you there. You know what's wild about that, Russ, is if you look at my book, that was the one thing I had highlighted as well. Wow. That we've been we we've been taught that milk does a body good. That that we we're, we're supposed to sit down and indulge in all these this meat. Cows and, don't drink milk. Mm. Calves drink milk. Cows don't drink it. Mm. So it's like it, it is really um uh, misinformation, they still tell you it's a food group, and that's a federal agency, and that bothers you when you find out that you have all this stuff that disproves a lot of things, and, and, and then the government goes ahead and, you know that animal product is destroying the planet. It will be uninhabitable if we continue to eat it and manufacture it the way we do. Knowing that, the government still gives $38 billion to the animal industry to make affordable food. Right. And $17 million to vegetables. That's crazy. Mm. So they give the vegetable industry nothing. This is Peter's information. So they're going to try to get at me. So I have to say, I just get my sources. But $38 billion is the number that's been cited that goes to the um, food, meat and dairy industry and the manufacturing of these lives and the poisoning of this planet and the people of the planet. Mm -hmm. And then nothing goes to the vegetable industry, which is... The, the way to solve these problems and to change people's lives. I was reading in your book, The Happy Vegan, where you were saying, like, I think it was the year 1935, just how expensive, even further on, how expensive beef used to be and how it was it was beef that was extremely expensive and vegetables and fruits was kind of, you know, that that was kind of like, cheaper. okay, that much was cheaper. cheaper. Yeah. And now when we flip and we fast forward now, Beef is and, and chicken, so on and so forth. It's not as expensive as it used to be, and now produce has come up. Right, because it it's, it it is a conscious effort on the part of the manufacturers of these lives of these lives that suffer. That ain't dominion over the animals, by the way. If you're religious, no religion supports this kind of abuse of animals. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know why the Pope didn't say something. He could talk about gays and women, but. And in a nice way, but still said the same thing, you know, like they don't go in the pulpit and gays, God bless you, he'll get you later. You know, he said all that stuff, but he didn't say nothing about dominion over the animals, which is crystal clear. Mm. And what we are doing to 100 billion animals worldwide and 10 billion in America um, every year is the worst comic disaster in the history of the world, aside from poisoning the planet and killing the people. What made Russell Simmons become a vegan? Well... I was surrounded by uh, people who knew the benefits, um, and a lot of and then started uh, twenty years ago. I and started. if I could back you up just a little bit, Russell, like you know every, I mean, you were the Burger Man, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you, Chitlins, you, all that, you yeah. know that. I mean, and just Chitlins. lifestyle of a, you know of partying. So you're you're not the guy that was water born on the plant and and sniffed all the coke and smoked the coke and you know the way you. I didn't shoot heroin, but they used to have that chase the dragon. I, mean, I did everything. Mm -hmm. I just, I was too old. I missed out on crystal meth. Thank God. 
I took everything else. I heard that. And for the last, God knows, how, I mean, for now, 27 years, I don't, I don't do drugs, but uh, or drink for the most part. I have red wine into the, the year, so I live a pretty straight life. But I learned that morning meditation kills late night drinking. Mm. I learned that, you know, and you learn that from experience. Mm. Morning meditation kills late night drinking, yeah. and eating healthy fuels a happier body. You know, I mean, what you put in your body actually fuels you, right? And if you put something that's going to make it heavy and sluggish, then you, then that's how you, that's how you feel. It's a drug, and they also do things to enhance the drug so that you get addicted to them. But it's easy to get them off. Once you get off them, you don't want it. It's mm. like you don't want that. It tastes like poison. Like you don't feel like a Coca Cola. Did anybody example. think that Russell Simmons could be? vegan, vegetarian, or take care of your life. And you know what I'm saying? Because I'm pretty sure at one point people had to be like, man, that's Russ. Yeah, right. Russ, Russ was like, uh, I went to yoga like there was so many hot chicks there. I went right. there 20 <laughs> No, for real. Over, to, over yeah. 20 years ago, there was all these girls. There was no dudes, one gay guy, 56 girls. Everybody in shape, all in downward dog. I love it, right? I come out of the first class. Yeah, I'm excited about it. I felt good. I was alive. If you've ever been to a yoga class and you sweat a whole lot and come out and shower, you feel like Hercules, it's great. So then... The yogic philosophy comes right after going to the practice, reading the scripture. And you find simple books, not religious, the Yoga Sutras for one, it's just a science book. Do this and get that. So, and, and then it also taught about Christ consciousness, nirvana, samadhi, taqwa, whatever every religion got, this God consciousness thing, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the state of yoga is that, the state of needing nothing or state of stillness. You're working to make the mind still, then everything in the universe unravels. Whether it's a car accident and everything moves slow, you're shocked into it, or the world moves that slow because your mind is awake and present. Presence is what we're all seeking, you know, a comfortable seat in life, right? That's it. Can't get nothing else. No matter how rich you are, you can only sit your ass in one seat mm -hmm. at a time. So as you learn that more and more, then you can go out in the world a little bit more fearless. And also, as you're more present, you can change on a dime. Like when you meditate and you're present and the noise is gone, you don't have to be stuck with the same kind of a cycle of negative behavior. You can start new at any moment. You know, and that's the idea of yoga or or any spiritual practice to give you the freedom to begin again. You you, know? you meditate every day every rest? morning. Every morning. Every morning. Is there ever a time when you do fall off or it, like it, is that just like breathing to you? I like to meditate every single morning if I'm in a car cuz I'm late. I'm going to meditate in a car. You know, and uh, if I'm, I get, dri I get driven to work. Every place else I drive myself. But, you know, in the mornings, I go to a meeting. Like I had this morning TV show. I, I meditate in the car. Uh, so I, I meditate every single day. Every single day. I don't miss a day. And, I, and you know what else? I don't miss my hot vinyasa. No, I go to hot that? yoga every day. Oh, man. Every day. I'm addicted. So when you're traveling, you just know when the finest I'm spot. I'm traveling. And... Sagan, who's with me right now, knows to find me a place. And you find it everywhere. Mm-hmm. Every place you go, you can find a hot yoga studio. So, so you just slow down and you make sure that you you have to go as busy as Russell Simmons is. You you're gotta, never too busy. You can't serve. You know, they say you can't serve God if you don't take care of yourself. Man, so the moon yeah. dara or first chakra, you take care of that. You know, you fuel yourself properly. You take care of yourself and you practice non harming yourself. And you can go out in the world and and give the world something good. If you don't take care of yourself, you won't, you won't be a good servant to the rest of the world. Now, uh, Russell, you get people that say it's oh, it's too expensive to go vegan. That's oh, uh, Beyonce not... can be vegan because it's, it's money. No, it's not true. My book shows you, and I'm going to write another book too, just because of it. Very easy. Mm -hmm. You can go make, you can go and 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 buy stuff and make a vegan meal on a regular basis and save thousands of dollars a year mm -hmm. on a vegan diet versus a meat-based diet. Even if they've given all of these opportunities to the meat industry, it's never going to be enough to really make it. Uh, or it might one day, but right now, you can create a vegan diet that's much healthier and fuels you much better. And you and we, from the hood, right, we like spice. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we stuck, you know, like we're in the hood. We, everybody got a Chinese restaurant. I don't care what, right. what city you're in, there's a Chinese restaurant. And they go make curry tofu with broccoli. It's gonna be spicy. It's gonna be whatever. It's gonna be kind of hood itself, right? right. It is. <laughs> so hood. it's gonna be good. It's gonna be also, you know, you could have um, black bean sauce and eggplant, or you could have um, garlic sauce, eggplant, and fried rice. Make it the brown rice instead. And you what know, about people who say, "Oh, it's just," and you're breaking it down. People say, "Oh, it's not available." Or go to Taco Bell and get a taco. T don't put the hot clogging cheese in it. Put guacamole instead. Mm -hmm. So you say you do a bean burrito when you go From to Taco Bell, a bean burrito. 
and put all the onions and peppers and all that, put some hot sauce and guacamole, but no cheese. Mm. And you're good. And you'll be happy with that. I mean, there's things you could do and you get, like in LA, it's easy. I mean, we're here in LA, right? We can go to, there's veggie grill all places. They're kind of expensive, you're right. Mm. They'll be cheaper. There's a company called Beyond Meat that's, that's selling everywhere. And they're blowing up. And they're like, they're studying the 40,000 plants. So they can give you cheaper, more nutritious, and also they study the brain so they can taste better alternatives. So their chicken and Van's waffles, chicken and waffles for mm. breakfast. You know what I mean? That's and it takes about two seconds because I'm a micro. I just throw it right up in the toaster for the and I you know I shouldn't, but I just might microwave the little little fried chicken from the um, and it's baked and it's fried chicken from the Beyond Meat. Put real maple syrup. That's expensive, versus Aunt Jemima, which is all ingredients you can't read. So you might have to just get you might have to break down and get some real maple syrup cuz right. it says ingredients maple syrup. But we're going to pay the post <laughs> yeah. ingredients everything you can't believe you never heard of. We're going to pay for everything in the long run anyway. Oh, I mean oh, you know. oh, not only will you save $4,000 a year but you when you, them doctor bills. Yeah, mm-hmm. man. All my friends is getting heart problems. Yes, my man. man had triple bypass yesterday. He was in great shape. He did all kinds of sit-ups. He worked out, he ran. He had a much younger girlfriends, and he's you know he brag about how he was handling his business. He was got a you know he was in shape. His heart was twisted; it was clogged in so many places. Mm. It was a hundred percent animal product, oh, and he's now God. gone vegan. He got my book now on his hospital by his hospital bed. He said you know it scared him to death. He almost died. His son works for me. He's my man. He really and then people are dying so many and so much. The cost of the medical bill, pharmacy. The pharmaceutical industry is doing well, too. Mm-hmm. When FDA poisons you, the pharmaceutical industry makes money, too. Mm-hmm. And it's really about money, <clears throat> and it's about us making a change. And we create demand and awareness. Again, I was saying earlier, the lobbyist backs away from the people who, when they start looking stupid. Mm-hmm. Like when you start realizing that the government is giving all this money to the meat industry and nothing to the vegetable industry, when you start giving the proper information out, industries change. Hopefully they adopt. And they don't have to just, sh- I don't want to get, I'd be like Gary Weber, they shot him in the head twice. How do you, he shot himself in the head twice. Right, the guy right, told right. About, right. I don't want to be, I don't know what kind of bricks I might catch from talking like this and talking to mainstream uh, environments where, like, a lot of the vegans, they speak to each other, you know? And I'm talking on, you know, CBS Morning News or yes, sir. talking to Big Boy. I'm talking in, in, a, in a mainstream arena and I'm attacking the U.S. government for not protecting us. Mm-hmm. I'm attacking the FDA for being, you know, paid for. And those are big. Ind- yeah, I mean, they, they are right. But they, the when meat they came industry, though, the- they, they, they might be more ruthless. Vincent. Right, right. Because I remember even when Oprah was like, just the hamburger thing, it was like, man, you would have thought that she killed four people and ran up in somebody's house. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm not Oprah. I ain't got the type of paper to right. defend it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, you know, I'm really putting myself at a little bit of risk. And people, um, I think it, it, the, the information is out there. What I'm saying is not um, possible to find. Uh, it's in fact it's everywhere. And it's becoming more and more prevalent, and I think that they should do is they should like just like Hampton Creek uh, makes just mayo, and they make they make scrambled egg right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Beyond Meat makes it. And they're fighting, I think, between who's going to give it to McDonald's. McDonald's is going to buy these scrambled eggs. It's pea protein from Canada. It's crazy. This pea protein they make just mayo. Hampton Creek does, and everybody likes it. It's cheaper, tastes better, everything. It's on fire. Just mayo in all stores. And it's much healthier. And um, then they make cookie dough. And the cookie dough, you know, chocolate chip cookie dough, whatever, also has the same egg ingredient. And I went to their office and they scrambled some eggs. And I can't tell you what a scrambled egg tastes like, so I can't really. Uh, say again, was it? How was it? Right. <laughs> close to a scrambled egg? But close to it mean good or bad? Was it? No, people don't want to know it's better for you. They want right. to taste better. Let me, let me tell I, you, man. I liked it. I don't even... I didn't even thought I wanted a scrambled egg, but I tasted the scrambled eggs. And McDonald's is going to end up buying them. And here's how they figure out how it tastes good. They check the brain waves. Mm. They, they did all this research of people's brains. So that way they don't have to, no subjective, we're all in the room, we just guessed, and these guys lean this way in the line. They check the brain waves to see how much people like their ingredients, uh, the taste of their products. And the brain waves are saying that their scrambled eggs taste better than other scrambled eggs. And their scrambled eggs is pea protein. It didn't cost... You know what it costs for a cow? The amount of water? For a, a pound of mm. beef is enough water to shower for a year. Oh, my Lord. Wow. Right. You can float a battleship for a cow. It is the most wasteful process of all of our natural resources is the manufacturing of meat. And that's because lobbyists 
uh, uh, put us in a We talk about water in L.A. and don't mention a hamburger that has taken all the water, mm. 600 gallons. Mm. So that reality that we are destroying all of our natural resources so that big business can exploit us and feed us poison, and, and it, it's, it's shocking. It's stuff, it's stuff that, as we know better, the government has to do better. We can't trust the government to find out and then make us do better. That's the opposite. We have to go the other way. We have to spread this information. We have to go vegan on our own and save mm-hmm. our own lives. We can't give our kid the hot dog because it ain't the hot dog we used to eat. Mm-hmm. The one that didn't give us cancer, that will if we keep eating it now, right. that hot dog what, had way different ingredients than this hot dog. Doesn't exist. Right. And that chicken that we used to eat was way smaller than the chicken that they serve now. Yes. That's true. That chicken doesn't have the growth hormones. It doesn't have the Prozac. It doesn't, Prozac, lots of Prozac. It doesn't have the antibiotics. The salmon has so much antibiotics that you're going to get sick one day, hopefully not, could, and, and the antibiotics even, don't work. Yeah, because you have so much antibiotics in you. And your salmon, yeah. It, it, it's, and then they got a super fish, Franca fish. They just approved it. A new way. <gasps> oh, to yeah, make. no. And we don't, know what the, we don't know what that is. Like, no one knows. There's people who are claiming already that that is going to cause cancer in mass amounts. And they don't have the proof because they don't have the they don't have a way to not prove it because it's new. But the people are saying that Frankenfish, this new way of making salmon grow thirty percent quicker or whatever it is, it's already they're making a fortune, you know, in these uh, factory farm fish. They're full of antibiotics, more antibiotics in, in salmon than any other product. What about people, Russ, Damn. that that eat fish, saying, oh, "Well, this is healthier," or "This is uh, you know, I'm pescatarian." I would or- guess it's healthier. You eat too much. Fish from the sea, you're going to get mercury poison. Right, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I, I know that Howard fish. Stern was just talking about how much fish he ate, and now his mercury levels are up. Oh, yeah. So they had to pull him, pull I, him off. I had a girl who can't eat fish, I, a friend who can't eat fish at all, period, ever again, they told her. Uh, and she didn't know. She was fine until one day she got really sick, went to the hospital, and said, you have so much mercury in your system, we don't know what to do. Good we, we just pray. We're lucky you're alive, and we don't eat any more fish. Russell Simmons, what do you say to the people that say, Man, now I gotta have my chicken, man. I, I gotta. Well, I, I, gotta have... I used to say about water. I used to smoke water all the time. Right. Dust, you know? <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, I used yeah. to always have a bundle of dust, you know, on hand. You know, what I mean, I smoked a lot of water, right? I used to always sniff a lot of cocaine. I used to eat pig feet. I used to eat chitlins. I used to, you know, do a lot of dumb stuff that I don't do anymore. You evolve, you learn, mm-hmm. and you know, and once you get off whatever it is, you feel better. Mm-hmm. You know what? There's, I always believe it. Just there's these two walls, right? And you walking toward what's right for you and what's good for you. And as you get off and, and in between the two walls, and if you get out of line, you scrape your arm on the wall, right? Kind of. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you walk, get out of line, you don't feel the wall, right? So we just get out of line. But when you get your ass whipped, you go back in line. Right. <laughs> so you operate in order, you know, um, and, and through meditation and through scripture, they tell you what order is, but mostly through your own prayer to understand the scripture. You know, they tell you things, and then you start to operate based on them. Uh, by experience, sometimes, unfortunately, sometimes you got to get your ass whipped to really mm-hmm. understand you got to be in a hospital like my man who's laid up there right now, or you got to be like AJ, God, 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 um, mm. from, uh, forbid, you know, laid up in the in the casket. I went to hell. I saw Big Boy. I saw DJ Hollywood, Love Bug Starsky, Busy B Starsky, Curtis Blow. I saw all, all the original rappers was all there, and and it was all laid. And AJ was laid up in the casket. Y'all might not know me before your time. Like I'm a hundred. This is like before. <laughs> These like the original before they were yeah, rapping. Yeah, right. hello, AJ so, Scratch, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Google oh yeah, it. well, I right, big boy trying to act old, trying to act old now. He got a little history. Yeah. Come on, they man. know the song and everything, right? Come on. So he brother. laid up in the casket, and it was really depressing because I saw some of the brothers who I, you know, loved. They still live in Harlem. A lot of them, they had hits. They didn't have Tiski Valley or Crash Crew. Or, they were there, and some of them looked like they had been eating a lot of animal product, you know. And they my age, and some look older than they should have looked. So I go downtown. And uh, a rapper from a, the next generation over, but not even quite that. Doug, Dougie Fresh hosts a hip hop gala mm-hmm. for health. Same day, so I leave in my suit from Harlem, seeing AJ in the casket. I go downtown. I, no, I noticed that the greatest rapper that ever lived, DJ Hollywood, who scared mm-hmm. everybody to death. We put the mic down and smoked. Nobody get near it. Hollywood was there in a white tux. You know, I always tout that he was the one that inspired everybody because mm-hmm. he was the best. Period. So Hollywood was in a white tux. So I got there at this great award. I was honored. Hollywood gave my award. He gave his great poem. It was amazing. Got my award. I stood in front of the stage. DMC is there. He and Chuck D had performed together. Dr. Oz, the famous doctor, was there. 
The first lady was due to be there. I don't know if she came, but the Surgeon General was there. I left. Surgeon General was there. And then I looked out from the podium, and I see they're eating American-made beef. I'm like, at a hip-hop health gala, it was about schools and health. I'm like, man. And so I told him, you know, if that's a third of your protein, it's like 20 cigarettes a day. You don't want to give your kid that. Shoot yourself in the head, but you can't poison your kids. And I said that, and then and DMC immediately texted Rev, yo, J- uh, Russ just ruined the meal. <laughs> <laughs> Man, and now what about your relationship? That's, that's brother, but, but Rev Run. What, how do you guys communicate with you being vegan? His wife just and read the run, book. And like, nah, having make, a cooking show yeah, all over the world kind of thing. Yeah, and I know. It's like, uh, you know, you don't have to agree. Nobody, first of all, your brother don't listen to you. I don't care about that anyway. Your closest <laughs> brother, I got Oprah to read The Power of Now and then promote that and promote meditation. I got her to meditate the first time. I got Ellen DeGeneres to take on my meditation teacher and then tell the world. And people that are not really your friends, but you mess with them a little bit, they will listen a little bit. But your brother, it's like whatever, you know, like your kids. My kids are in boarding school somewhere uh, uh, far off. I can't say where the mother get mad. <laughs> Another foreign country where the animal product is different. They eat animals. Mm-hmm. But to eat that, if they were here, I would have to, Fight to keep them from eating it. Mm-hmm. But I don't think I have to fight because Kimura, knowing the facts, would not let them. Mm-hmm. But in another country, you can eat that because it's not factory farmed in this such a way. It's illegal to make beef, to make life the way we make life and to poison life the way we poison life to then poison our lives. Mm-hmm. It's illegal. You can't put that much antibiotics in food in, in England or Germany or France or Australia. No way. You can't That's do that. Crazy. It's only in America. You can't, you can't make Franca fish in, in Germany. You can't make Frank a fish in Africa. In fact, somebody was in South Africa and texted me on my Instagram and said, yeah, they try to sell us the chicken the way they have chicken in America. We, our government, they tried to buy it, promote it, do whatever they could. Our government said, hell no. He said, you can keep that chicken. Now, and, what's what? not what's wrong, but let me just said, ask you know, this. What is the difference between American beef and if you were to go somewhere else? Well, first of all, there's not enough grass in this in this world to service the amount of cows we're making. So there's a lot of substitutes, corn and other stuff we're stuffing cows with that are not even the sweeping the fish, the, the sea creatures from the bottom of the ocean, anything, just give them food. And that stuff is creating lots of complications. And it's illegal to give a lot of the growth hormones and the antibiotics and other stuff to the cows in other countries. So our beef is dramatically different, tastes different, and has a different mm-hmm. effect on us than the beef around the world. And it's only because it's legal here. You know, like we're experimenting. You know, and, it, and, and the reason it's legal here is because of lobbyists. In England, you can't pay the government to do stuff. Every congressman is not for sale. Mm. Every person in the parliament is not for sale. You know, unless it's illegal, but the real legal payment of all politicians through Citizens United and other forms of uh, uh, contributions is, is destroying our country. It's why the prison industrial complex is still kicking. It's why they're still locking us up for long periods of time for being diseased. The prison industrial complex ruined the fabric of the black community, right? I mean, it mm. locked up educated, uh, innocent, diseased people in criminal behavior and dumped them back in the hood to make jail culture instead of, ju- instead of church culture our culture. Mm. They did that through their war on drugs that they knew was not winning. That was really a tremendous loss for everybody but... $60,000 a bed is a lot of money. Right. And then those people become psycho criminals because they're criminals from learning how to be criminals in jail. They were just drug addicts, and now they're criminals. They come home violent. And that reality is, is a cycle that we incarcerate more people than anybody in the world. It's the lobby. Nowhere in the world does it. It's the lobby. It's the money that they make. So that's, what, that's, all. Yeah. that's the reason we, put, we're, we are in such bad shape with our food. It's the lobby. And what we need to do is to go the other way and push for it. And each individual can cheaply go vegan and save their life and save the hospital bills that are going to come, uh, no doubt, in the future if we don't change. Tell me what you think about uh, Sarah Palin endorsing Donald Trump. Oh, Lord. And, <laughs> and see, Donald Trump is one of them. Okay? You know how you say lobbyists, and at one point you're kind of like, man, I got to back away just a little bit. Because Trump was your guy pretty much. Oh, you know? I, um, I mean, you know, look, I hung out with him for 30 years. I mean, 25 years. We were friends, you know, whatever. I always thought, you know, if he would say things a little anti-Semitic, 
little, you know, little funny things, jokes about blacks, whatever. You know, I, I let people breathe. You know, I know a lot of conservatives. I get along with him. And he was funny. He was charming. Very nice host. Very nice to me and my family. Joey used to go to Mar-a-Lago on his plane with him every weekend. A nice enough guy till it became dangerous. Nice. Like him running for government is dangerous. Him running for the president of the free world is insanely dangerous to this country. And the world knows it. And, and it shows that there's still a lot of people who are angry and uh, and obviously people are angry about government, but I mean, angry, like hateful, like racist, like mm-hmm. Islamophobic, like all that, you know, that stuff that he's saying is really hurtful and, you know, backtracking on what we built this country on, which was uh, religious freedom, right? We didn't build it. We were dragged here and he took our religion. But I mean, in general, the idea in the book is that we have religious freedom. Mm-hmm. What he said about the Latinos and what he said about, I think that he can't come back from those statements, although he can switch on a dime. I know him. Uh, he can't win. So mm. the best thing for him to do is win the primary and then we'd be safe. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, he wins the primary, then then we can have put Bernie Sanders in. Man, mm. that's what I was saying. I was like, man, if he's coming in and now with Sarah Palin, I was like, man, that's that's probably a good move for us. Oh, yeah, it's very good for him and a couple of Republicans. Uh, this, the more dummies, the better to get together to beat the rest <laughs> of the Republican Party. It destroys the fabric of the pu- Republican Party. Because mm. I know conservatives whose views are, are, are disputable but not just stupid, you know, right. like their, their views about a lot of things, big government, whatever, it just all sounds kind of reasonable, but you know better, you don't believe it, you think we should take care, of, everybody should have two, two years of free college, we should give health care to everybody, we should, all things Bernie, I believe, but their arguments are, are, are reasonable. Trump's arguments are not defensible, not even by a lot of Republicans, mm-hmm. and so I think we'll be, have a great chance to beat him with whoever runs, mm-hmm. whether it be Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders. So I kind of hope that he wins. Right. Although the other guys <laughs> up under him is real conservative too. They chase him down the rabbit hole to yeah. racist and horrific statements themselves. But at least they, you know, uh, you know, uh, almost electable. When was the last time you seen or talked I'm, to them? I haven't talked to him. Right. I wrote that letter to him. He ain't called me. Right. I don't want, he don't want this brick because if he gets in a fight with me, I'm a yogi and not a priest. Right. So that. if he starts calling me like where he was screaming on, you know, Rosie, you know, Donald and all that, I'm not doing that. Right. You know, I, I got, you know, I got. A, I mean, I'm a nice guy. Right? Everybody on bus is softy, right? But I gotta have him talk to me like he talked to these women, or the way he talks to you know people and you know be just murdering them with his rap. <laughs> you know, we from around the way. We don't do that. We're not yeah, having to talk. Wait, what? Right. right. <laughs> like, like, catch a horrible brick like, saying something yeah. mean to me publicly. <laughs> now, Russell, some people don't. What's What's the difference between vegetarian? And vegan. Well, vegans, you don't eat no animal product whatsoever. I mean, a lot of people eating a lot of dairy. That's really, really bad for them. It's clogging their arteries and making them sick, and they're lactose intolerant, and it you know, goes on and on, right? So there's also a lot of people eating a lot of fish. It's got a lot of mercury, and it's got a lot of other stuff, toxins from the ocean because we poison the ocean. <coughs> and other ones are eating fish that is in factory farm that's full of antibiotics. So I don't eat any animal product. Mm-hmm. Nothing comes from an animal. You know, and... and it doesn't solve every problem, but it solves most of them. You know, if you look at the way the dairy farms work and what they do to the cows and what the cow tastes like and what the milk does to you, why? Hey, Russell, do you get sick? Damn. You know, like when they say, oh, it's flu season or I, got I don't a cold. get none of that. None of that. Yeah. I ain't been sick in five or six years. I ain't had a cold or nothing. Wow. So, That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I haven't had a cold in five or six years. I was just saying, my girl got a cold and I said, don't cough for me. I might get sick. And I laughed at it. I said, I'm not getting sick. Right. So cough, be sick, whatever you want. Stop eating animals. She actually did, but but you know she hasn't been doing as long as me. Man, have but the you point ever- I make, I don't get sick. I don't think it's only that. I mean, of course, I take care of myself. Mm-hmm. They say you need circulation every day. Thirty minutes of walking, something, some circulation for your body. Mm-hmm. Right? That's part of the product, you know. And also, the common nervous system builds the immune system, so the meditation every day helps. So there's a, a bunch of stuff you do that change that changes, you know, the way your immune you know, system works. Russell, sometimes, man, especially like with with life and you know, making a life decision and moving from one station to the other and all the things that just come with life. I always have people, I have a f- couple people that say, man, you need to slow down, you need to meditate. And I got with this one guy and I did, you know, we just kind of sat there, but how beneficial well, is meditating? Well, cover many science journals these days. I mean, for thousands of years, people have meditated. But more recently, all the research on why they've meditated for those thousands of years come out. The left and the right side of the brain start connecting. I mean, the creative and the, you know, the more mechanical side start to operate together, which is very important. Um, you, you build greater gray matter in your brain. You can see it on a scanner in six weeks. So your brain capacity grows. 
Um, there's these cells that stop growing and put a cap on them as you get older and they shrink. They start opening up and growing. Um, there's, um, there's so many benefits. Um, like I said, the, the greater memory, brain capacity, ability to learn, calming the nervous system, which is the most important thing in rebooting the brain is critical. You know, the noise that runs through your head is the cause of all sickness and sadness. Oh, God. Ooh. You have hundreds of thoughts in your brain all the time. You ever been in a car accident, everything moves slow? Mm-hmm. That moment, you see the world from a present state. Future and the past disappear. You're like wide awake. The world is moving that slow all the time. You do everything to get to a place where you can see the world that way. You want the world to be, you want to be awake. You want to drive a car and see every flower. Mm. So meditation is a tool, the best tool of the eight parts of yoga and of every religious and promote and, and spiritual teaching. Quiet and quiet the mind. Be still and know. As the mind is quiet, the noise, the chatter causes sickness. It releases stuff. It's 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 the cause, it's the greatest cause of of, of a lot of the disease. So calm the mind. At least twenty minutes a day, let the brain settle. And um it's something that I, I promote because I know for sure it works. It changed my life a lot. And everybody I've given it to who's really done it. You know, mm-hmm. again, I gave Oprah a teacher. She taught many people. I gave Ellen DeGeneres a teacher. She taught many people. Is it a certain meditation? Yeah. I do mantra-based meditation. Mantra. So if you were to sit, close your eyes, and repeat a rum to yourself, fast or slow. And you sit, and you put the alarm on for 20 minutes. And you're like, after one minute, you're like, my brain is going crazy. Your mind's going crazy, right? Now, are you and saying minutes, it or are you no, thinking it? No, you're saying it, rum to yourself, humming it. It's a vibration. You don't say it at all. Just so you're repeating rum, rum, rum. At any tempo you want, fast or slow. And you're concentrating on that mantra. You'll lose the mantra to a thought. Think the thought. Gently come back to the mantra. Mm-hmm. If you want to scratch, scratch. But you're stuck. So your mind's going to be like, oh, like a monkey in a cage going crazy, right? But when the monkey bounces around the cage every so often, it realizes I got to sit down because I'm not going nowhere. This is how the mind is in the cage, bouncing around like a monkey. It always settles. I'm going to try that because I've and tried always sell. And you know what happens? All the benefits that they wrote about become yours. Everybody. No one can't meditate. If you're patient and still, the, the nervous system calms and so goes the mind. Always. So if you only have 10 thoughts instead of 100 thoughts, success. Do you have to do this, Russ, early in the morning? I do, do, it, do, it, I do it in the morning, but you can do it anytime. You can go in the next room, sit. And put it on the alarm. See, the alarm is the, t- the key because three, one minute into it, you're like, oh, my mind's going crazy. Two minutes into right. it, you're like, wow, I'm meditating. And once you think, wow, I'm meditating, the brain breaks yeah, a little yeah. more, and then it settles even more. And then something else, and then even more. And it keeps settling more and more. And you don't have to worry about, am I meditating yet? If you're sitting still, the thoughts are coming and they're going. And you watch these thoughts because in life, you want to be the moving meditator. Tater. You want to watch the thoughts mm. as they come and go. You want to see them come. Like, you know, and, you, and you see them without anxiety, and you can make better choices on how to react to the world before you, you know, the emotions uh, make choices for you, but now your spirit can make them. And it's much better to have, because you take inventory. At first you sit down, all your thoughts come. And as mm-hmm. they come, you see them for what they are, things that pass. Because you forget instantly. You have a thought, a second later you're on another thought. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and then you're back to your mantra. And at some point it's only you and the mantra. Single-pointed focus. And that's beautiful. But even if you have one thought, it could calm the mind so much because it's one instead of a hundred. Because right now, you, even as an, you analyze what I say, a hundred thoughts are going through your mind. Mm-hmm. But to have one thought at a time, that would be to be present, to see what's in front of you. And, Russell, you wrote a book about that as well, correct? Yes, Success Through Stillness. It was my Success biggest Success Through Stillness. Oprah, I, it was on the best yes. sellers list for 20 weeks. Man. It was, yeah, it was a, a big, I, no one wanted me to write it. The publisher was like, don't write that, no one wants that. Same publisher said, don't talk about being vegan, came back to me and said, please write a book on being vegan. <laughs> please Man. write a book on being vegan. You guys got to grab this book, and I'm already going through it the first time, and then I'll go through the second time, and I always... Just kind of highlight, man. But I'm afraid, not afraid, but I'm just wondering where will I be when I close this book up? Because every page, and another one of my partners is reading it as well, and he's uh, probably a chapter or two ahead of me. And he was like, wait, wait, wait till you, where you at? And I'm like, man, okay, don't, don't push me too far. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just wondering where will I be when this book is done, bro? Mm-hmm. Like, well, listen, 
you are helping a lot of people by talking about diet and health in a place, in a time where our government is allowing uh, the factory farming industry to poison us. This education is good because you speak to so many people. You know, it's, there's a transformation going on. First of all, if we don't make this transformation, we won't be able to live on this planet no way because we have destroyed it for human. Con- it will be nobody human. I mean, there's going to be species here. As you know, we're destroying thousands sometimes of species per year. Sea creatures, we just like, there's some that don't mm-hmm. exist every year. A thousand, you would just destroy them. It's not just a hippopotamus. It's like lots of species that we're destroying. So the sort of ecosystem is in a lot of trouble. Global warming is scary. And what's going on with our earth based on our animal consumption and what we're doing with all the byproducts from the animal and what we're doing with all the resources to give the animal is scary. And it adds up to we won't be here mm. unless we change. So we have to change in order to survive. We can't survive. The earth will not. The earth will survive. We just won't be on it. Mm. We'll wow. be one of the species gone. That's all I mean. Wow. So that change is coming. There's a company I mentioned earlier um, that's called Beyond Meat, and they're studying the 40,000 plants around the, the, uh, the globe to see which ones will be suitable to replace the animal products we eat. And what's good about that is, first of all, it'll, it'll cost the earth nothing to, you know, to give us vegetables. Secondly, it's like when you got a horse pulling a carriage. If somebody comes up with a car. The horses stop pulling carriages. Now we get cars. Mm-hmm. That's what we'll do with the animal product. We won't need animal product. We don't need it now, but we really won't need it as we come up with more inventions. That pea protein that, they, that they're fighting, either Hampton Creek or the other one, um, or Beyond Meat. Beyond Meat and Hampton Creek are fighting. Who's going to sell McDonald's and scramble eggs? That's the beginning. When they sell pea protein that tastes better than eggs, that's healthier than eggs, in your Egg McMuffin, mm. that's the beginning. The next thing is like this veggie burger is healthier, tastes better, because right. it's got to taste better. Yes. Again, it's, it's in the brain that they test these things through brain waves. So if it tastes better and it's a better burger and it's way healthier and it's way safer and it's cheaper, believe me, if it's cheaper, McDonald's will give it to you. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm hopeful that that kind of transformation uh, will, will start to happen very soon. It is happening. So the big companies, that instead of killing me for talking, instead of trying to destroy me for talking like you did Oprah, transform your businesses. Do more research. Figure out ways you can, trans- you can save the planet and still make money. Don't kill Russell. You know what I'm right, there. Man, Russell, right. I appreciate oh, yeah, you, brother. You. All right. God bless you. God bless you. Russell Simmons up in here, man. Remember, the book is The Happy Vegan. Make sure you grab that. It is Big Boy's Big Neighborhood. Boy.